You know, it. Hype. Challenge. You know, Hype. Emery. I'm hoping Cam comes from like the corner. Good evening. Good evening. But no, it's not a good evening. It's picky blindies. <laughs> man said, I am a picky blindy. And he, fam, man went to Birmingham and said, picky blindies, this way it was happening. No, he yeah, said, he said that. Remember, he said he's, he, he was learning English through picky blinders, but he called it picky blindies. <laughs> and now he's in Birmingham, innit? Hey, so shout just, out Emery, man. It's so poetic that he went to a team in Birmingham. Oh, no. Them man rise the thing still. Bro, they killed us. Honestly, first. Your lineup was for Gage, though. Well, let me, let, me, let, me, let me say this. Everyone who knows me knows that I've been backing Ten Hag from the sec. He was my choice to come in. I think the acceleration, how we play. I wasn't expecting in mid-November, early November, to be playing the way we are. But I think today's loss is largely on him. Mm. I think he got the lineup completely wrong. For me, putting Donny van de Beek and Eriksen in the midfield too, that's the least athletic, least intense midfield partnership in the league. Mm. Yeah. I think, and this is, gonna, this is purely my opinion, right? Giving Cristiano Ronaldo the armband after just a few weeks ago, the incident that happened... For me, it told me what kind of man Ten Hag was. <laughs> I can't lie. I thought Ten Hag. I thought what do you ten, mean by that? I thought Ten Hag was a bigger man than that. I can't lie. And that's whoa. Pause. 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 Whoa, pause, whoa, pause. Buddy. Wait, hold on. Whoa, All I want to say whoa. is that I think Ten Hag has his best moments this year have come when he's made big decisions, huge decisions. The first two games, it was a catastrophe, and he made huge decisions, dropping dropping Shaw and dropping pause. McGuire for a long period of time. Casemiro yeah. comes in, completely changed the team, and I think. Bringing Cristiano Ronaldo back to the magnitude he has, playing 90 minutes every single game, like today, anonymous, and yet he's the one staying on. And I think giving him the armband after his behavior a few weeks ago just shows that anything can kind of be forgiven. I like the no man is bigger than the coach, no man is bigger than the club mentality he was kind of instilling. And for me, this is kind of just a step backwards into, hey, bro, you can slip up once, but you're Cristiano Ronaldo, so yeah. you can just have the armband. So just a quick one. Go ahead. Whilst we're here, Manscaped, STTV, 20% off. You know what to do. Shout out you guys. Nah. Quick plug. <laughs> Bonds. Okay. But yeah, no, I think I think Ten Hag for me, and I think also the in-game management for a few games now has been a little bit suspect. And again, this isn't me turning on Ten Hag. I yeah. still believe that he's the right Listen, guy for United. You can question your coach Absolutely. about sounding like Absolutely. Him. Mm-hmm. I know nowadays it seems like you can't criticize what do you him. Say? Yeah. The two things can coexist. Yeah. 100%. I can like what's going on, but I can also criticize it. But Go talk to me about the lineup because Bro, even, even playing can... Rashford on the right. Like yeah. Rashford cannot play on the right hand side. But why did he do it though? Well, it's to obviously to bring Garnacho in, which is to put Ronaldo up front. But, like, I just think that he had something good going on with Rashford up front. He's not the best hold-up striker, but he had that out ball. He was scoring goals. He was in great form. And now you're bringing in Cristiano Ronaldo just for the sake of it, I believe. And I think it completely ruined the dynamic. And here's another thing, right? When Ronaldo plays, it seems like Dalo and uh, Eriksen, all they do is just consistently look for him and just yeah. spam cross into the box. And you got Tyrone Mings in there. Look, Tyrone Mings isn't great, but one thing he is good at, you put the ball in the box. I did! Head that shit out of there, bro. I was going to say, though, do you not think that maybe Ronaldo still has that pull on a lot of the dressing room? Because you look at guys like Garnacho, yeah. he is yeah. fawning over every word Ronaldo says. Dalo, I imagine, worships yeah, country, Bruno. Country. So for me, I think it's Ten Hogs. I know you, no player is bigger than the club. But he's looking at Ronaldo, A, what the history, what he means to the game and the club. And then he's like, this isn't just someone who I can bomb out of the first 11. I have to kind of bring him back. And I hear what you're saying to some extent it is to the detriment of the team. But so, you yeah. don't know that going into the games. You thinking, well, do, do you, you know could that? still bag me I, I don't. Th- I don't think. I don't think that's the case do anymore. You Bro, you've seen the results this- do you look at Ronaldo pre-games and go, nah, this guy's done. He ain't getting me nothing. He's useless. Obviously, I'm in a different situation than he is, but at this point, I truly believe that's the case. Bro. Hey, that was a good one. I, nah, I'm in a different that. situation. <laughs> we want to hear your you thoughts, Kellerman. <laughs> you know when Josh had a girl, she's like, oh, listen, I'm in a different situation now. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, that's a hey, new one. Just, just, I'm in a different situation. Just watching off my laptop using my VPN pause, but all oh, I know, I, I think Ronaldo at this point, bro, is not a guy that you can rely on, especially for 90 minutes. If you want to bring him in as an impact sub, a guy that you kind of put cross into the box for, but you, even the statistics this year, bro, Ronaldo starts games for United, and in the Premier League, they lose more than they win. Mm. That, that's a fact. I think he's got three in his last 17. Or bro, like that, yeah. what 100%. I was going to say, though, is, again, what you have, I think what a lot of fans have to remember is it's a very weird time with the World Cup, what, less, like, about two weeks away. There's one game left of Prem. There was, did you guys have a midweek game as well? Uh, we had the Europa League. Yeah, 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 the midweek games and everything. Like, squad utilisation and keeping the right people happy and everything, especially when, in the back of your mind, you're probably planning for January. Let me tell you this. It's very difficult. Let me me add on to that. The one piece of sympathy I have for Eric Ten Hag is the fact that, yo, this squad is not deep enough. I see a few United fans who I think are going a little too far in terms of, oh, yo, 
if we if, if City had lost yesterday or drawn yesterday and United had won today, they would have been four points back. <laughs> At the end of the day, Anthony is out, Sancho is out, and Martial is out. And that leaves us with our wing, wingers being Elanga and Garnacho. That can't compete week in, week out. You see Bruno goes in and Van de Beek comes in. And hey, bro, Van de Beek, I think... Look, thank you for your time here. <laughs> what, what do you, you say? What what you he called him a useless piece of shit. Bro, that guy was here for But anyways, experience. regardless, the point is that United's squad isn't... And it's normal, right? This is the first season of Eric Ten Hag. Yeah. He's only brought a few of his players in. And for the most part, those players have really performed well. Mm. But you see with Arteta, for example, at Arsenal, the first year he was playing like three in the back to compensate for the fact that he didn't have his players in. Three yeah. years in, you see all his players in their top of the league. So it's going to be a process. I completely understand that. Mm. But today, for me, just magnified the fact that United, if they do not go into January and bring in another forward option, I don't think they can make top four. Just because there's not enough squad uh, depth in that squad. You don't think so, no? Nah, nah, man. Because you see, three guys go out, and that's the lineup today. Yeah. I don't think you can rule the top four out because of how, I'm not ruling eight, it out, how but Spurs are playing. I think Newcastle, you don't know if they can maintain it. Chelsea and Liverpool, you look at how they're performing. I don't think anyone can rule themselves out. I think you're saying it's a handicap. You're saying that ultimately, if you don't bring a forward in, knowing what the injuries you've had, and knowing that Ronaldo probably won't have the next mm, go for the season. Martial could come yeah. back. But that's what but I'm saying. Martial could get cooked again. If, if United's, if Everything's United's, could. Ronaldo's Let me tell you this. If United's best 11 stays fit for the rest yeah. of the season, I actually think there's a case that you could make that they're the third best team in the league. I believe they could finish third. But, bro, the players you're talking about, Martial, you can't trust his fitness. Varane, you can't trust his fitness. Mm. Uh, Anthony and Sancho, they're not the most fit players of all time. Listen, and like, use United's most dynamic forward, Anthony Alanga. He's right there. Anthony Alanga is the guy you're going in for a third place. Because <laughs> <What's this? laughs> you were so close no, to ah! hey, Are you gonna, so close? Hey, I couldn't man. do it. <laughs> I don't want to be disrespectful or nothing, bro. Come you were on, so man. Good. <laughs> I don't think he's such a shit. On the point you mentioned, though, yeah, yeah. like, because obviously your your football bag is deep. Like, who would be the right profile or the player that you would prioritize come January? If I could have you one player, I, I think it has to be a number nine. But yeah. the problem with that is but like, either. that that's what, the thing, Cuckoo's right? Cuckoo's got seven months left in his contract, but he's young. quality. But I think he's going. To, Ivan Tony, if he beats the betting allegations, <laughs> even if you come with them, you want that dog? I want some dog in you. I want some hey, blood on your hands. Since Sir Alex retired, bro, we need we need some corruption. Yeah. some corruption at United, bro. Yeah. No, but we, we see links with like Vlahovic. People keep talking about Aussie men, Jal Felix, Sesko. Sesko, I think oh, he no, went to Leipzig, Leipzig, but like maybe it. we yeah, can yeah. pay a little more to get him. But I just think they need another body up front, bro. It's too late. And like I keep saying... But is it, is it a number nine that's ready to go, though? Or... It has to be, bro. It has to be. United has been also lacking a real number nine. Even Ronaldo, for me, has never been a number nine like that. He's always been someone who plays off like someone up front. He's never been a guy who leads the line by himself. I think United needs a number nine. Whether it comes in the, in the, in the January transfer window or in the summer, that has to be a huge priority for them. 100%. Yeah.